And I'd say that the, the, the most principal icons or elements of the Static Basic Income Grant is the fact that, number one, it has to be um, universal. And in that, um, we're advocating for the fact that it has to be generally applied to every single citizen um, who is a beneficiary of resources within the continent. And I say that because um, we advocate for a static wide basic income grant that is primarily financed through a tax on extractives. And secondly, uh, the second pillar would be the fact that it has to be um, a, a notion that has coexistence with, with other grants. So that relationship with existing grants um, within the framework of different countries has to be one that is maintained. Uh, it, cannot look, it cannot be looked at in isolation from what exists. And what we're asking is not for a new innovative social security measure to take place, but we're asking for one that would complement existing um, measures that governments have already taken to the fore. And that is primarily um, because um, more than bridging the gap between the rich and the poor, it's about leveling the playing field, opening up economic participation spaces for every citizen to be able to participate meaningfully within an economic structure of a country. And thirdly is, is, is the amount really. It's been a very contested issue and, and, and I think um, the primary factor is the fact that just issuing cash transfers regardless of employment status has been at the center of, of controversy around this whole topic of basic income grant. And so the amount really has been a challenge to set, it's been a challenge to negotiate, it's been a challenge to even have a debate um, around. And, and really what we are advocating for is at least a start off of 25 US dollars every month to each citizen that would be inflation indexed. come back to, to South Africa in the sense that we have a very progressive legislative framework that regulates our mining industry, right? And through that, we have um, a mineral royalty system that has been established. So this is a tax where um, mining companies who intend to extract resources from the Republic are um, are required to pay a tax to have the rights to extract that resource. So this is normally channeled through into the National Revenue Fund and of which in many cases it hasn't translated into development aspirations for communities but most importantly mining affected communities. These are communities which house mining operations, right? And so it's about really getting into the grip about how do we ensure that revenues um, taken from um, such taxes are actually filtering back into to communities. And the mineral royalties uh, system is, is actually one pillar that could, could help catalyze that. And hence, I think the beauty of the alternative of posing a tax on extractives is the fact that you are mobilizing new income. And, and the whole um, narrative around illicit financial flows that has plagued our continent in the largest. I mean, Africa is so rich in mineral resources that it, it, it pains me personally that um, mining on the continent has not worked for its sole ben beneficiaries. In the context of South Africa, um, we have existing social um, grants that are paid out through the South African Agency for Social Security. Um, and, and with that, we're thinking that with the new developments around identification cards that um, has moved, transformed from the previous ID book to a now standardized microchip card could actually help with opening up spaces for communities to access this, this money in, in a way that is much easier and more efficient, but also more importantly 
to actually open up the space for communities to have access to banking services that they very much require. And so those are some of the alternative methods of which it could be transferred, but the use of post banks as well, which are located in many communities and, and centralized um, um, posits or, or centralized cubes where you have communities access them as they would when they're accessing their social security or social grants in any case, but using existing structures to ensure that people get that money. But more innovatively, we're having um, ideas around using um, 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 models such as the Bitcoin to, to ensure that you don't put boundaries in, in escalating or ensuring that um, this money is accessible for communities. Taking into account, of course, the digital components of that which could pose, pose potential barriers in terms of access as we are aware that not everyone has a smartphone, not everyone has access to the internet. So those are some of the considerations that are coming um, to the floor with, with these new innovative mechanisms to, to, to ensure that these social transfers take place. Mm -hmm.